and you're listening to Communities Live on Sheffield Live Radio 93.2 FM with Susie Casson and Andrew Tildersley. And we're joined in the studio by Jonathan from the Sheffield Anarchist Book Fair. Welcome, Jonathan. Thank you. So thanks for coming in. Well, this morning I googled what is an anarchist <laughs> and it said anarchy is the opposite of hierarchy and it's about equality and not the strong oppressing the weak and everyone having a fair share. Is that how you'd sum it up? Yeah, that's a pretty good uh, summing up, but also it's a, it's a left-wing point of view. It's a, a, a point of view that believes that capitalism, as well as the nation-state, unnecessary and, and negative. So it's a, a philosophy that wants to evolve society to a better way beyond capitalism. So it's very much a current topic at the moment, isn't it? Mm-hmm. So on Saturday, there's the Sheffield Anarchist Book Fair at the workstation. How did the idea of a book fair start? It's not our idea, to be honest. We, there are book fairs, uh, anarchist book fairs all over the world, um, in various cities around the world. And in Sheffield, we've been, a small group have been running one. This is our seventh year of holding a book fair. It's, it's one way to, to continue the, the tradition and the um, education of people in, in the, um, the ideas of uh, the anarchist tradition. Because we don't have big parties like the, some of the left, and we, you know, big political parties, obviously. It's more, um, a whole collection of small activist groups. So bringing people together for a book fair means it's an opportunity to share your literature and share your ideas and activities. So you've held them in previous years? as well. Yes, yeah, it's got bigger each year. We've had a real lot of interest this year. We've had many more stall bookings and book, uh, interest in running workshops and meetings this year than in previous years. When and where is the book fair? It's this Saturday coming, 23rd of April, 10 o'clock till 6 o'clock, and it's at the, the showroom workstation behind the showroom cinema. What kind of people tend to come along? We get a whole mixture, and actually people do come from different parts of the country as well. The stall holders are coming from as far away as uh, as London, and uh, yeah, we get just all ages, really. People with kids to, to all, older people. Lovely. So I had a look at the website, and there are other events as well. There are films being shown. Sure, sure. The, the films, we've got one which we're really pleased to have, which is a, a premiere. It's a film about the, well, the title of the film is, is called Full Bins, Empty Bellies, Lonely Lives. So it's uh, linking what's happening with the, the crazy situation of overproduction of food and yet people going hungry and people having lives with sometimes isolated lives. So the filmmaker... Daniel Vallon is um, linking that and he's put together a film which looks at things like Food Hall Sheffield, for example, which you might know, people might know is um, a way of eating together and using food which otherwise might have been wasted. And then the other film is about the Yemeni community in Burn Grieve. It's, uh, it's not a premiere, but it's a film that's been made in Sheffield about two years ago, looking at the Yemeni community who moved here in the 50s and 60s mainly, and now their they're children's gener- uh, the next generation live in here, and they've uh, put together a film to illustrate what it's like to be a Yemeni community in diaspora in Sheffield. So what are you yourself most looking forward to on Saturday? Some of the workshops, really, I think. We've got a whole range of workshops, including some people coming to share their experiences from other countries. There are speakers from the the Kurdish community on the border between Turkey and Syria where they're putting into practice some of the principles of anarchist organisation where governments literally collapse. There isn't a government there. So you have to try and start a state start a, not a state, but a, a government in the presence of warlords and war going on. And I've been following some of this on actually another radio station podcast called um, Dissident Island. This is based in London and they they have activist speakers every fortnight. They do a podcast every fortnight. So it sounds a really interesting experiment. And we've got people who also work in Bolivia and people who are interested in Getting the idea of getting rid of borders, no borders. So I'm quite interested in that global perspective on things. That's my personal interest. But we've got other talks on um, hunt saboteurs are talking, various feminist um, groups and LGBTQ speakers. We've got the IWW, which is a, an, a, an anarchist or an anarcho-syndicalist union, which has been going about 100 years. They're very active in Sheffield, so I'm really looking forward to hearing what they, they've got to say. I could go on. There's a, there's a lot happening on the day. But I, I was just going to say, there's quite a heritage of kind of anarchist 
goings on in Sheffield. I, I'm pretty sure I remember there being an anarchist bookshop opposite the Winter Gardens, which is ironically now the Starbucks. Yeah. About yeah. 20 years ago, something. We had briefly the Commonwealth Cafe in Scotland Street where Prince P- Kropotkin came and visited, gave a talk, and lots of sort of early anarchists of people in the uh, Labour movement at the time. You d- you're looking at me blankly. Wow, that's incredible. Okay, go Kropotkin, and research it. Yeah, Kropotkin was, was really, really And also, key, key when you spoke key. about the food hall, yeah. uh, they used to give out uh, food to because there were slums sort of around Holy Street, sort of around the yeah, area, yeah. and they got overwhelmed and <laughs> had to stop. Yeah. So that kind of leads on to the next question that Susie's got. I mean, I was talking to someone last night about pending coffee, which is a great idea for sharing things around a bit, isn't it? Mm. And I was thinking Sheffield hosts a massive events like this, so why do you think the city is so open to this kind of event? I don't know, really. It's 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 obviously a left-wing city. Um, I'm, only, I'm from around here, so I don't think that uh, people like me realise that until you go to other places which are, are far more conservative. We've, it's just a thing that, a tradition, I, I don't, you know, walk in any pub or cafe and you can have a conversation about basically between people who have that left-wing point of view. Maybe the current generation it, don't see it like that, but my, my grandparents, they were in the, the Labour Party and it would be unthinkable to them not to be you know, the, that generation was very strong because they knew that the bosses, they would say the bosses fight for their interests, so we have to fight for our interests. And then I think in the, like, probably all of us born in the in the later part of the 20th century, that was a golden period when things were really good. And I don't think I don't think people realise that. So the awareness of politics that our, our grandparents and great-grandparents had is kind of tailed off. And it's, you know, it's particularly true that the, uh, the trade union movement's been uh, decimated, so that was a way to... to to spread awareness of politics. So I think it's really died down in, in the say, the last uh, two, three or four decades. But as we, as we can see now, the way that there's a real concentration of power in the hands of, say, the American government, the NSA, all the things that, all those revelations about people monitoring the internet, the fact that huge corporations like Google and the oil companies, etc., etc., huge corporations are dominating, so dominating the business empires to the detriment of the planet, literally, you know, the, the, if the worst projections of climate change are correct, these corporations have destroyed the planet and prevented the, the climate conferences actually doing something about it in very sneaky ways. They've prevented, let's say, development of good technologies like for example, uh, electric cars have literally held back the good developments. So when pe- I think people now, they, when I talk to a lot of students, um, I think people now are beginning to realise and, and have a political conscience again, a political awareness again. Sorry, I've gone off on a tangent. What was the question? <laughs> The book fair on Saturday. What is the most inspiring anarchist type publication you've read? Would you say that's interesting? My favourite author. I haven't. I'm not real academic about this, and there are academics who were there on Saturday. But my favourite is a, an English writer called Colin Ward, who died a few years ago. And a couple of bo- I've read a couple of books by him. And what he's saying is that it's not highfalutin or difficult to understand. He's saying, look, anarchism is the way that ordinary communities actually do organise themselves. They don't use that word. They don't. Use use a word like libertarian but he said using the example of things like uh, how allotments are run you know allotment gardens or how going further back how the railway system was run on a federated basis so one part of the country would communicate with the other part of the country coordinate together but they didn't necessarily need an umbrella governing body over the top and actually any group of people say in an emergency situation they do get together and get organised without the boss on top doing it. So I like that idea. I like that. That's one of the tradition traditions within anarchism to say, actually, it's just people organising themselves. You say that's the Sheffield Anarchist Book Fair on Saturday, 10 till 6 at the workstation. And it's free it is. to it is. come along. Yeah. yeah. And can I just say that we have a pamphlet which you can download from our website and print out if you wish. And we're putting it around as much as possible in a few venues. And the website is Sheffield Book fair.org.uk That's great, thanks. Thanks for coming in, Jonathan. Really interesting.